Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, as you probably know, my name is Vincent Canan, I'm the president here in LIT. As a follow-up to yesterday's email, uh, I'm here today to answer questions that you have sent in, both staff and students. We've had a large response to that uh, email request. We have a large number of questions. Uh, we've broken them down into a number of areas, and I'm going to go into those areas uh, very shortly. Just to say at the start, and to, as of today, we have still no confirmed cases of COVID-19 in any of the campuses in LIT, and nor do we have any staff or student who is currently undergoing a test for COVID-19 in LIT. Also to tell you that, uh, as you will probably know at this stage, since early, uh, late January, sorry, we have had a, a, a group looking at the impact of COVID-19. We elevated this to an emergency, um, or a critical incident group, sorry, uh, uh, in the last number of weeks, and uh, we have been dealing, uh, preparing for uh, the issues that we're facing uh, and will face with COVID-19. So, and to say that we've had been following HSA pro HSE protocols, taking all directions from the Department of Education, and uh, and again, I'll come back to some of those points as we move through the questions. Uh, I think we, we're looking at a very much an institutional response to this informed by external bodies and uh, we'll continue to do that. So let me start with the first major activity that was that came through from you uh, yourselves. We've had a number of questions in relation to infection control in particular um, and as you're all fully aware uh, given the information we've placed uh, from the HSE and Department of Education and others Hand sanitization is the most effective way of preventing the spread of, uh, of catching or preventing the spread of the COVID-19. You'll be aware uh, that for around three weeks now we've had a sanitization, uh, sanitizing stations at the entrance uh, to all of our campuses. These are mainly alcohol based and, uh, and we'll continue to keep those in place. A new protocol has come in uh, to each of the toilets, which is around a new antibacterial soap, uh, which is uh, again uh, available in all, all of our toilets now. And again, hand washing is the most effective. And that doesn't mean it doesn't have to be alcohol based like uh, at our sanitizer station. It's basically soap, soap and water. Uh, and the more that you can uh, wash yourself in soap and water, you will kill this virus. So that is the most effective way that you can do it. In relation to masks, we've had a number of questions about masks. Masks are only effective, only effective if you are symptomatic, if you have that. It is to stop the spread of that if you have it uh, and that. But it is not an effective way, if you're asymptomatic and do not have it, of not catching it. So uh, please be reassured that uh, if masks were uh, a valid way of preventing that uh, you, we would be distributing them, but they are not effective. So please, please continue. Everybody has to wash their hands as, as, as soon as you enter the building uh, and frequently. Can I also say that, you know, uh, we've had a number of questions where people are coughing. Uh, coughing uh, is, is a way of spreading. It's, droplet, it's uh, droplets that uh, are spreading, the uh, aqueous droplets are spreading the, the, the virus. So please, if you have to cough, cough into your <coughs> under your elbow as deeply as you can. If you have a tissue, please place the tissue in here <coughs> and then dispose of the tissue as quickly as possible in an appropriate vesicle uh, and wash your hands as quickly as possible. This is your best protection. This is your best protection for that. Uh, <coughs> if you start to show uh, symptoms of a cold, a flu, uh, our advice now, irrespective if you still continue to feel well, is to stay at home. Okay? Call your GP. Do not go to your GP. Call your GP and your nurse or our nurse uh, here uh, in LIT uh, and, our, uh, and do, do that. That is our, our uh, infection control protocol at the moment. It's in line with best practice and we wish that you will continue to do that uh, for the coming days and weeks, hopefully. Another area that we uh, had a number of questions on is around the whole area of self-isolation. Uh, 
and the implications of self-isolation, particularly for your classes, your learning outcomes, uh, the exams, and for co-op uh, or work-based learning side of things uh, in particular. Uh, just as an example, you know, uh, I have a, a sibling uh, who goes to a secondary school. They're being told to uh, self-isolate for two weeks. What does that mean? Should I stay away from college or do I attend as normal? Uh, well, <clears throat> the information and, and the HSE advice is that, that they should continue to come to LIT. Uh, and uh, if, of course, if, you, if your uh, sibling starts to be symptomatic, then move immediately to self-isolate yourself from that. Contact the nurse here and we will give, be giving you the course the uh, the nurse's number and email uh, and the advice you'll get from the nurse is uh, if it's a valid uh, case that you, you should be now moving to self-isolation she will provide a cert to you that cert then will will uh, will also be copied to the, um, the the head of program the program head and the head of department and we will seek then to facilitate you in some way in relation to uh, um, lectures, uh, etc. Uh, let me be very clear though that uh, if you're self isolating, and, uh, and this is verified by our nurse or a doctor, you will not be penalized in any way. The issue of uh, uh, exams, uh, let, me, let me deal with uh, maybe work-based learning side of things first. In relation to work-based learning, go by the advice of the company you are in. You have to follow the protocols of the company you're in. And if the protocols of the company you're in suggest that you should self-isolate, then again you need to contact uh, our nurse and the cert will be provided. Uh, and we have protocols around this. But in the first instance, follow the advice of the company. Uh, a, uh, let me see, we've got some other words. Um, don't want to put my family at risk of my final year. Again, we are not considering that uh, you are a high risk at this point in time if you have not been exposed at this point in time, if, you're, if there are no symptoms. If you haven't met anybody uh, who who has been isolated, uh, so again, you're not considered high risk and shouldn't be taking this stuff back to your family. So follow high guidelines again uh, that we have up in the websites for that. Um, in relation to um, other ones, in relation to again, this is closure for two weeks, close case by case. Um, so really. The advice is uh, continue to come into your classes. Uh, follow the protocols at the entrances to L all LIT exciting. Use the hand sanitizing stations. Um, keep up to date with that. Uh, if there is an incident, you will be informed of it. Uh, and if we need to move to uh, further protocols, uh, we will, and I'll deal with those uh, in a moment. Uh, an area of particular concern uh, for students in particular is the whole area of, of students uh, and indeed staff with underlying conditions. And I suppose the response we have here, it's not a one size fits all. Uh, our nurse uh, has been in contact um, with uh, those students who have identified themselves as having an underlying condition. Um, and if you have an underlying condition and have not been contacted by the nurse, then please do so. Because the nurse is available to deal with uh, anybody with an underlying condition on a one-to-one -one basis. And she is available to give the best advice uh, as to what to follow and what protocols to follow for your particular underlying condition. Another area that, that came through was in relation to travel, and I'll maybe deal with international travel and domestic travel separately. In relation to international travel, we are looking at uh, this mainly around staff. We're looking at these on a case-by-case -case basis, um, and uh, depending on the situation in the country that you will be traveling to, this is done on a case-by-case case -case basis. In relation to, uh, we have a question here around uh, 
staff and students who may travel by, by bus or train uh, to, uh, to LIT locations. Uh, again, we advise you to follow the protocols for the H and the HSA guidelines. Currently advised us to continue with this practice. Of course, uh, I would say, and wash your hands uh, as soon as possible after disembarking. So, I would just add, sorry, uh, uh, in relation to Erasmus students uh, abroad, we have a number of Erasmus students abroad currently. Uh, the advice at the moment is for those students to stay where they are in the countries that they are. But uh, if, if there is an issue and if there is a situation where students start to feel uncomfortable, and that's it we can bring the students home. There is funding to bring the students home. Can I turn now to uh, another issue uh, where a number of concerns were raised uh, by email about an incident uh, yesterday, Thursday the 5th uh, of March, uh, which led uh, people to believe that there, there may have been a COVID-19 case in Moylish. Now I can assure you now, this was not a COVID-19 case. But all precautions were taken. Protocols kicked in because of the possibility that it may have been, just in case it was. So protocols kicked in as a precaution, uh, and that led to uh, uh, our nurses being called, and uh, indeed um, a full regalia being put on. Uh, as it turned out, uh, it was a very effective test of our systems and protocols. Uh, so uh, we deem yesterday, uh, the Thursday the 5th, to be a success in the terms of testing the protocols. But I can clearly and categorically state that this was not a COVID-19 case, but it did work out into a very appropriate uh, drill. So what happens if there is a full or partial closure of LIT or any of its constituent parts? This is the situation we have been planning for, contingency planning for, for well over a month at this point in time. To ensure that the essential uh, activities of the organization can continue in a different way, but that can continue. So, uh, and in relation to programs and program delivery, we're looking at online program delivery as well as other means of doing it as much as possible. So these, these plans continue to deepen, um, but we I believe that we have uh, a structure in place to deal with most scenarios. So I hope uh, some of your questions and concerns have been answered uh, here today. Um, and I'd like to thank everybody who's uh, put forward questions and, uh, and continue to do so. Continue to contact the, the helplines uh, provided. Uh, the whole thing here is that uh, we try and get through this. The entire LIT community gets through this. Uh, this crisis and uh, please be assured that your institution is doing everything it can to stay ahead of things to plan for things and uh, look the best advice is still the oldest advice wash your hands stay calm